What's going on everybody? We are trying a new game together today. Now that's actually not completely the truth for this one. So this game is called Combo Card Clashers and I've actually tried the prologue version, but we have the full version together today. So we're trying it again with the full version with everything that everyone can expect when the game comes out. Now this one is actually coming out on May 17th, so in about a week, but I was lucky enough to get a copy of the game from Arabit Studios and also Burnt Games. Thank you so much to both of those groups for lending me a copy here so that I could show off the game to all of you. Now, when I first tried the prologue, I really, really loved it. I put it on the wish list right away. This is not your normal deck builder game. So this is your Slay the Spire type of collection of all the cards and inventory management, if you want to call it that. But on top of that, during the battle sequences, you're going to have a very unique mechanic where you have to place your cards on a sequence essentially and it plays through the sequence and there's looping and different effects happening from different types of cards so i really liked it because there's that crafting element to it while you're trying to actually use the cards in your battle it's not something where you use your cards one at a time type of thing it's very very different so if you're looking for a deck builder and you're looking for something unique here it is. I've enjoyed it in the past and I'm so excited to take a look at the full version with you right now. So combo card clashers, let's jump in again. I'm excited. We're going to start a new game. Of course we are. Alright, so for the prologue we actually played as the mage. So we're already going to get a new experience. I'm happy, more than happy to try the warrior once again. And we have some stat allocation here. As the warrior, I would assume strength is going to be the biggest attribute for us. It also increases max health. You know what? Put a point of agility in there. Why not? Do we want to view the story? All right. I guess we're going to view the story. I thought it was just going to go ahead and show us right now, but maybe it's showing us as we try to play through and I'm going to go for the full experience here with the warrior. Chapter one, a narrow escape. Seated on the throne of Zaradon, your reign is hailed as a golden era of peace and prosperity in the kingdom. Yet beneath the surface, an unrest brews fueled by shadowy political forces. On a peaceful day while holding court, tranquility is shattered by assassins cloaked in red and black, proclaiming Diglorak has risen, your reign is finished, as they charge your throne. Ooh, look at this. Guards swiftly intervene, allowing you to parry the leader's attack, leaving a trail of blood on the attacker's face. There is chaos in the throne room as assassins overpower your defenses. In a final act of desperation, you summon a portal, escaping just as a sword slashes through the space you occupied. Oh boy, writing's pretty good. Without time to plan, you land in an unfamiliar land far from the kingdom with only a tall black obelisk on the horizon as a landmark. Tales speak of those obelisks as magical foci for unimaginable power, offering a glimmer of hope to save kingdom in the face of uncertainty. Cool. All right. Ah, I remember the, the map that you traverse as well. It's um, it's a pretty nice layout for the map. It's, it's more of a like game board grid where you can really go many different ways it's not just like here's one starting point it paths off into like three or four paths and stuff like that it's, it's a little bit more complicated than that you can really go anywhere you want uh so okay i am gonna go for an enemy encounter right away oh no i have to go over here first travel the map and defeat the boss to go to the next world important stops uh at helpful sites to increase your power yes sir i'm gonna try to remember what all the things do it, it has been a while but i'm definitely gonna go for the enemy encounter first i remember gathering resources was something that i was trying to do before we hit the other landmarks choose a prepared strike and drag it to your combo grid start the combo but click the start combo button to begin your combo attack yes sir i will do what you want me to since you're you're thinking i never played the game before that is totally fine. We might increase the game speed a little bit. Understanding how cards work is very important. 
A card can be physical, magical, or modifier type. The card attack damage is located here. Mana cost is located here. Modifier cards give effects to cards. Place this card before attacking card. And that is what makes this such a good game. All of these modifier type of cards, um, that's, that's what makes it very, very unique. So we had this modifier card to, I didn't even read it. I'm guessing it did a cleave. And so it applied that modifier to our next attack. Modifier cards need to be, be played before the others work. You can play many modifier cards to combine the effects. Absolutely. Can I see what it is? Oh, wait a minute. You can't see what it is after you place? Interesting. Um, not sure if that was intentional or not. Play the next card twice. So if I modify first and play it twice, that's, that's very interesting. I can see the latest card that I placed on this turn, but I can't view this one. Very, very interesting. Well, I'm going to start the combo. We powered it up. We're going to play it twice. Boom. Boom. Solid. Eight hit combo. Let me check out my mana. Wait, mana is used to use magical cards. And... Uh, yeah, from what I remember, you actually don't need mana as this character. Your health is a red bar. If it reaches zero, your run will end. Your mana is a blue bar. You need enough mana to use cards with mana cost. There are status effects. They are positive or negative effects on your character. Understanding enemy effects is very important to help with the combat. Dire rat? Yeah, okay, so we can just see what they're doing. Uh, it's, a, it's just a rat. I'm totally fine with that. This is... Damages implies desolate to enemies, which is reduced enemy physical resistance. This is a rapid strike that strikes three times. Every attack is one third of your damage. Your next physical attack uh, cleaves nearby enemies for 55% damage. Interesting. So maybe we put a rapid strike in there as well. Poison buff for enemy receives your lowest attribute as damage lasts for four rounds. What's my lowest attribute? Can I see? Settings. Nope. Can I see my character? Ah, here it is. So my lowest is Wisdom 5. So 5 damage. That's actually kind of good. And we're going to apply a lot of it. I'm assuming that the poison will just elongate the duration. It won't stack, but we'll see. Huh, wait a minute. I did a double card on Venom, I think. That's my bad. I should have put it before. Okay, so you can see the card. I guess during the tutorial, there was just a little bit of weirdness where it locked you out from seeing. Um, seeing the effect. So I actually want to do the strike twice. So I'm going to switch those two around. The sequencing in order is very important, of course. I'm going to put this after the prepared strike for the cleave because I feel like the rapid strike will be too weak if we apply the cleave to it. All right, so we're going to get lots of poison on those bad boys. Oh, they're all dead. Epic 12 hit combo. All right, our first battle is done. We got an artifact stats and heal 50 health. Very cool. So let's level up. I don't think I'm just gonna do wisdom just for poison, although ally summon units by 15 and damage. Wait, summon units max HP by 15 and damage. Does that mean summon units damage or my own damage? I'm assuming it's like tied to the summoned units by the way that it is described here. Hey, Derek, this is combo card clashers. A very, very unique deck builder. A very unique deck builder that um, I got excited by because I tried the demo or prologue that they offered last uh, month in February. That's not last last month, but um, a couple of months ago. And um, yeah, the 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 folks at Arabit Studios were nice enough to uh, give me access, early access to the full version here, and I'm excited to play it. So we have. Chaotic Prayer, random, replace a random card in your grid. It costs mana. I remember really liking this card. It was RNG based, but it plays another card in your sequence again, and you're probably laying down cards that are mostly useful. Sometimes it, it, it screws up your, your combo a little bit, but that's okay. Doubles healing at healing sites on the world map. Wait a minute. 
Start each encounter with a chaotic prayer, prayer tile in your queue. Right, so it places it randomly, but it is a free card. It's super powerful right at the beginning though, because you're gonna have like basically a double attack right from the get go. Reduces shop price. I'm gonna take the chaotic prayer, the cha chaos rune here. Is that selected? I'm gonna close it there. And we have it at the top, cool. Let's take a card. Physical cards earn damage from strength magicals, uh, earn damage from intelligence, the usual stuff for magical versus physical. Deal 10% more damage for each tile played before this tile in the queue. Damn. I'm gonna take it. Close it up. Click on the left card icon to view all the cards in your deck. Yes, please. So we have some gear as well. We have this that gives us a little bit more damage. Damage resist, status resist, and a additional strength stat. I am blessed. Every day I feel blessed. Uh, click on the top left bank to view your hero gear. Oh my goodness, you can move gear around in your inventory. Right, so you, there is inventory management here because you will have, I think they call them allies or or partners or something. You can, you can have up to four of them. They can be monsters or humans from what I remember. What is this, a gear shop? I have 420 gold a hey, 420 um i might go for the next battle again recruit tavern maybe i'll go towards the top here and then perhaps i need a rest site at that point all right let's just do it all right so we have our chaotic prayer right at the beginning that's not so bad uh rapid strike maybe 10 percent more damage for each card space after this row interesting so if you could have good planning and you know you're only going to need like five spaces to do your full combo then you can place it right here and then all the empty spaces is increasing the attack of this prepared strike i might go with a six piece because this guy has 115 over here this this rat with crystals growing on its back let's start the combo so we're gonna attack twice because of our prepared strike going twice since our chaotic prayer is going first you can move cards in your grid after you place them yes i've already done that you can click on enemies to change who you attack ah right okay so do we have cleave again we do not we what the hell happened here did someone lock me up someone locked me up i don't know when that happened i wasn't paying attention let's go with mighty strike i know it's taking away space from this thing but this will do more damage for each tile played before the tile in the queue. So these will empower it. Let's go. We're going to go for him first. And then we'll see who gets hit with the hammer. All right, that's a strike. That's a strike. And that's another strike. Holy crap, the rat's almost dead. I guess we didn't need five spaces. This is your backpack. Move cards you do not want to play here. Yeah, so you do have a, a backpack so that you can put away cards that you don't want to put in your grid right now, but you want to save for later because you can only take one card with you from your draw every single turn. So it's, uh, it, it, it's a little bit of planning. Play the next card twice. You know what? Reduce the amount of space. I guess you can always just keep moving it. So I did something stupid. I didn't need to plan at all with this. You just put it in the earliest spot that makes sense for that turn. Whoops. It's all good. So we might even kill the rat. He's dead. He might die too. No, he did not. Okay, so we, we've lost about 130 HP, 120 HP. Oh no, we got locked again. Okay, so he's, he's dead no matter what I do, I think. But you know what? Let's do a quick little... No, we don't need a cleave. Locate, locate Vault. That's, this is not a modifier, is it? Ah, whatever. He's dead. For sure. Alright, peace out. I'm gonna do the game speed 1.5. Alright, let's collect the gold and armor. We got an uncommon helmet here. Attack life seal. Heal 3% physical damage as health for rounds. Damn, life seal already? 3% is not a lot, but we'll see how far we can get with that. Um, this is essentially the same if I go up or down. Alright, let's go down. So we can get some people to help us here. Rezo is already available. How come you are more expensive than the other people? 
He has lower stats. What the hell? He has really low stats compared to this guy. I'm just looking at strength and agility, which is what he should be using. Heal the lowest slash. Maybe it's his cleaving strike that makes him a little bit more valuable. Give a buff to increase damage by 10% to all allies. Hmm. I have 250. You know what? Give me a warrior and give me the healer or spellcaster, whatever they may be. All right, next battle. I don't remember what happens with the allies. I think they are just auto battle, auto cast, but we shall see. Can I move this around? Oh, I can move it around. So we want a cleave. Wait, what is this one? Rapid strike. No, we want the prepared strike first. So let's start the combo. Let's aim for this guy, dudes. Do my allies do the same thing? No, they're going for different peeps. What the hell, guys? Ooh, confused. This card, de the card details are hidden. Well, that's not too bad because I remember what it is. Let's do a cleave here. Oh wait, this does a, the next, this does a random card twice. So I wonder what happens if we do double cleave. It does do a double cleave. Hmm. I don't think doing double cleave does anything. But that's that's RNG for you. You can't you can't have everything. Play the next card twice. So we can do our prepared strike twice here. Damn, dude. Just hit him once. There you go. So that was a very good battle. Give me that. All right, um, we might as well go to the rest site since it's in our line of sight. Does it cost anything? No, it doesn't cost anything. Okay, let's keep farming. Wait a minute, should I go down here? What is this thing? Skill shop. Buy and upgrade cards. We have another rest site. Special event to alter my fate. Well, that sounds kind of crazy. I am actually going to go down here. I do want to go to the prayer site or whatever that was. I don't remember exactly what they do. They're probably just event spaces. We see that in many games. A lot of deck builders have that random event type of space. All right, so let's start the combo. Always go with the prepared strike as usual. He's half dead already. Oh, he summons little babies. Well, I'm gonna kill the summoner since we're pretty close already. I don't think I'm going to go for a cleave. Maybe I'll go for a mighty strike. Yeah, let's go for a mighty strike on this guy. Oh, we're doing double mighty. Oh god! Hit him! Easy enough. What the hell did she just do? Okay, well, we don't need to worry too much about this, but... We'll do a multiply. Ah! Prophetic vision. This little fish should definitely be scared. Goodbye. Another piece of armor for us. And it is a uncommon mace. So it gives us more damage. Frost debuff, 4% chance to miss an attack for each sack of frost. That is a very interesting effect for frost. So it's kind of like a blind. But in this game, there isn't really like... A speed mechanism so usually with ice it slows them down or, or makes them miss a turn or something but that is interesting it makes them miss so where's the frost coming from three percent chance to cast ice fissure three percent that's it is there a shortcut for inventory maybe there is I don't know what it is I can take a look later so I think I'm gonna put that on my main dude <laughs> I'm attacking most often, so that would give me the most uh, frequency of the Ice Fissure from the second modifier here. And also, I also think I'm taking the most damage, so I need the Life Seal. I don't know. I'm, I'm willing to change that for sure if it becomes appropriate. Let's go for the other battle here. Okay, the other thing that I'm wondering is, this thing has 3% chance to cast Ice Fissure, right? This thing attacks three times. Is it every single attack has a chance to, to proc it? 
I don't know exactly how that works, but we'll we'll figure it out, or maybe we won't. I don't know. Maybe that's a question for the devs. I could definitely reach out. So these guys have way more HP than the last battle. So we, we have a, a steep, steep increase in, in the difficulty, perhaps. We're going to go for the snake first, I think. Siphon mana? Hmm, the snake will die quicker, but not that much quicker. Venom spray. Cleaving scratch. Both of them sound really terrible, so I'm going to go for the snake. Basic. Five hit combo. How did you cleave? Okay, so he's sapping my mana. If I want to... Whoa! The Shaman, the Witch Doctor, sorry, has added additional modifiers onto my grid. Interesting. I don't want to move this around to empty spaces because that decreases the effectiveness of it because it's the prepared strike. But if we move it over here and we do Prophetic Vision, I wonder if it means 30% less damage for the specific card that you're laying there, which doesn't matter for a modifier, or if it applies it to the character. Let's see if we can tell. So use it twice. I don't think it reduced my overall damage for the turn. I think it just means that modifier, that negative modifier that the Witch Doctor did applies to the card on top of it. So I guess I did a smart thing. We might do some cleave. Yeah, we're going to do a cleave here. Um, plays the next card twice. We want to do the, the attack twice. All right, let's start the combo. You're going to do... Oh, I don't have enough mana for this prophetic vision anymore. That sucks. How do I recover mana? Oh, okay. I get a little bit per turn. So I can't use this, so I'm going to put it into my bag. I do have five mana if this is costing five mana to use now. Um, Venom is going to cost five again. Or we can just do an, a Mighty Strike. I'm going to put it over here so it doesn't get the th negative 30 damage. Oh no! I can't use the Chaotic Prayer either. Hmm... Oh my god! No, my mage! I still don't have enough mana to do much. I can do this to empower my prepared strike with more empty spaces, but this does more damage for every card played. Huh. We go like this? Alright, snake is gone. We have to res our our mage at some point. Uh, let me see what I got. I got another attack over here. I don't think we have enough mana to do the last attack. Yeah, too low mana. Oh, come on. You couldn't do nine more damage, you stupid soldier. He's dead too! Alright, just kill him. I tire of this. Bye-bye. Damn, I probably need a lot of gold to do all that resurrection that I need, but we'll see. I'm not going to go for Serpent Strike because it's more magical. Chaotic Flask. Bounces to a random target six times, dealing your lowest attribute as damage, and a random debuff. Discarded after play. Gives a 7% lifesteal buff for magical attacks for one round. Yeah, not going to work. All of them are pretty bad for me. It's uh, kind of crazy how wild, wildly different the the card choices can be because I assumed it would kind of tag the character to get mostly the physical cards, but we didn't. But I'm okay with that actually. Sometimes you want to keep that deck slim, you know? We have a staff here. I'm going to take a look at it after we have a resurrection for our recruits here. So I healed. Let's go to this spiritual shrine. It's an unusual orb. You find an amorphous floating orb in front of you during your travel. Skeptical, you toss in a nearby stone. The orb ripples and twists, and a few seconds later, a small winged creature emerges and flies away. Toss something else in. Choose a weapon or armor to throw in. Repeat roll of weapon or armor of that type. Interesting. I am... 
So why did a rock turn into a winged creature? That that doesn't scream to me that it will re-roll our armor. But I'm gonna try it anyways. You take a piece of gear and toss it into the orb. Which one? <laughs> the orb staggers back and ripples violently and spread across the surface. A large metal object that falls out of the bottom of it with a loud clank. What did I get? Oh, I do it now. Okay. Is it possible for this to roll into something higher rarity? Because I would totally do that. I don't know exactly what it does, so let's just do it with this weapon that's common. What happened? What? What happened? Nothing's in my stash. Where the hell is it? I don't see nothing happening here. I lost my gear? <laughs> okay. Big question mark about what happened there. Oh, this is not the recruit thing. Alright, well let's buy some armor perhaps. No, I want trinkets. So we have the blood necklace. So this is damage dealing debuffs can crit for two times damage. I'm not really doing that. Gain one to all attributes, maybe. Doubles healing at healing sites. Heal five health at the start of your turn. Hmm. I'd rather go for something that's mana generating, to be honest, just so that I can use the chaotic prayer more. But I'm gonna use, or I'm gonna buy the cloak here for all attributes. And let's get out of here because I think, where's the recruitment thing? How does it look like again? It looks like a desk. We, are, we aren't seeing any desks in front of us for a while. That is unfortunate. Um, do I need another healing site? I can go to another special event. You come across a small fountain of molten gold bubbling out of it. Inside of the fountain, you see an object, but you can't tell what it is. What do you do? Stick your hand into the fountain, gain a random upgraded card, and take 5% max HP as damage. Leave and take a curse. Take one damage per turn for each curse in your deck. Yeah, I'm not doing that. I'm going to take the 5% damage or whatever. We got an armor. Oh, damn. This doesn't look too bad. I'll take a look at that in a second. And we have a Death Ray Magical. We definitely don't need that. Gains four damage for each enemy killed by this card. So this is the um, kill with this card and it continuously grows type of thing. It's super strong already. 76 damage, my god. 35 MP is asking for a lot though. And we're not really a, a magic user. So it's not a good roll for us, but it is what it is. Maybe we can find a use for it. I'm hoping I don't draw it too quickly. Uh, okay, so he's 600 HP. Hello, sir. Let me do this. The usual business. What is this uh, thing? Combo stack. Can be used. Other cards to count debuffs. The last two rounds. Okay, combo stack. You locked up this. That's totally fine. Um, Venom enchant isn't going to work unless I put it before this. So I'm going to do rapid strike afterwards. Huge combo. He's also comboing us. So we got this Death Ray. Definitely don't want to use that. We're going to put our Mighty Strike afterwards. Okay, this isn't going so bad. This seems easier than the last battle, for sure. Uh, vulnerability. So this will reduce their physical resistance. I should really put that... He's locked in my hammer, unfortunately. If I use this, actually, so you want to do it like this. Yeah, we arrange it like this so that my prepared strike is the most frequent thing that we're using. Or maybe I should put that on the hammer. Holy crap. I guess we casted our ice thing and I missed it. So we have cleave over here or we have death ray again. I'm going to do locate bull and uh, yeah, let's go. He might be close to death, I think. That's a lot of attacks. Almost there. He is definitely going to die soon. Reduce enemy physical resistance by 20% last one round. Yeah, I should be using that more often, I think. He's dead. I don't need to do anything here. I'll put that modifier at the end, although it doesn't really make sense at all. I just know that he's going to die, so I don't care. Cool. 
Artifact stats and 50 health. How did I get 50 health? So we got stats for strength. I'll go with agility. Increases critical ev and evasion chance by one. I'll go double e agility then. Why not? What does this do? Increases mana capacity by five, mana regeneration, and spell damage by one. You know what? That's actually kind of important too. Let's plug one into intelligence. Just because I feel like there will be modifier cards that use mana, although we're a warrior, we want that mana so that we can keep playing all those modifiers. Start each encounter with a decayed blade in your grid. Deal 50% damage, maybe an upgrade can fix this blade. I remember seeing this in the prologue and I never figured it out. I'm not gonna take it this time probably. Deals three times the number of turns as damage to all enemies each turn. I'm not sure if that's going to do a lot. I'm gonna take the dragon orb for a little bit of sustainability i guess and we got a battle over here okay these guys are looking weird splits into two smaller slimes in four turns so if i focus you down you will not do that hopefully they can harden which will resist give them resistance to damage interesting all right, we're gonna have to go with the hammer this time because we don't have prepared strike. Damn, that thing hits hard. Maybe we should be going with more of the mighty strikes rather than the prepared strike. You know what? We're gonna go Vull as well. Let's go Vull so that we can bring down their resistance. Okay, we might be able to deny the split from both of them. It would be cool to see it, I guess, but maybe not today. Oh, they lock it up like legit. You don't get to use it. I thought they just locked the position of the card and it has to be used there, but they actually don't allow you to use it. So we want this at the end. We're going to do double of the hammer and he should be dead. Wait a minute. Is he dead? We need crits to make him die. We did it. Master, eight hit combo. We got a monster ally. Sick! So yeah, there is a little bit of uh, monster taming in here. You can't really control it. I think it's just completely RNG. But here is our first party member that is a monster. Does he get the equipment too? Sick, dude. You are more of, you have zero strength? What is this? Out of everything, I wouldn't have guessed that the slime has a point in agility. I would think maybe intelligence or wisdom. Anyways, so this has 5% chance to chill, 3% chance to do Ice Fissure. Interesting. Oh, he's getting the agility from this thing, right? He is, so he has no stats? That's strange. Um, he is more, what is this, so physical? You know what, I'm gonna give him the axe. We'll see if that life seal helps him out. We'll go to the special event again. They've all been pretty good. Cursed Oasis. This one doesn't sound good, actually. You are tired from your travels and find a hot spring. The water is unusual. It's dark and sparkling like a starry night sky, but it's the middle of the day. Do you rest in the spring? Rest, heal 10% max HP and gain curse or just leave. I'm just gonna leave. I don't wanna get that curse. One HP per turn. Um, I know it doesn't sound a lot, but I'd rather get curses for other reasons, probably. Skill shop over here, both of them are showing up in the same move for us. Don't need that, don't need that. Can we remove? Burn card for 50 gold. Okay, great. We're gonna do a burn on the magical card. Honestly, I might do it on the prepared strike too. It seems not as good as the mighty strike. So if we can get the mighty strike earlier, that seems like a good vibe for us. For each card space after in this row. Oh, it only does it in the row. I I, know, I didn't read this correctly at all. So that makes a lot more sense why it wasn't as strong as a mighty strike. Okay, you know what? I'll keep it. I just learned how to use it properly. Reduces the mana cost of cards by 20% for the current round. This is still helpful, but not in our current state. Frost debuff and 50% damage to your next card. Interesting. Let me look at the relics first. So this is odd, old goggles. View one extra choice on your first and second turn. View one extra choice. Sure, we can get to our hammer a little bit quicker that way. 
We've seen that one before. Reduce the price of new cards. Each attacks gain three base damage, but costs more mana. Hmm, mana knife. I don't know if that's worth it. I'm gonna take the goggle so that we can get to our hammer faster. I'm almost wondering if an additional modifier is cool. And this also makes it um, harder for them to hit me. I don't know if I'm using too much mana yet, but there we go. With the new cards, I might want to burn something. Maybe the Rapid Strike? Wait, Ice Enchant plus that Rapid Strike. Two damage to your next card. Yeah, with this plus Rapid Strike would be crazy. Same with Venom Enchant, uh, because it will apply it three times. I'm going to get rid of the Prepared Strike. Just to thin out the deck. We all know how thinning the deck out works. It's very important if you want an efficient deck. You can't just take everything you want. Okay, so we got this guy, Master of Illusion, level one. He is doing a sword slash or doppel step, creates an illusion of the caster and clears debuffs. Do I have to kill the illusion? Because I don't want to. Um, we didn't get what we wanted, but we can use the triple strike. Or we could have taken the cleave or vulnerability thing here. That could have been all right too. So you just did a hard end, didn't ya? Okay, so he has an illusion. What the hell? I hope he disappears soon. He doesn't have a debuff on him, so I'm very scared. <laughs> Let's get the cleave or the hammer in here. I have to attack him? No, I don't have to. I'm gonna keep attacking the same one. Okay, we're both attacking the same guy, good. We did the Frost Nova thing. This doesn't seem so hard, the, the character doesn't seem that hard, or the uh, the boss. Damage and applies Desolate to the enemy. I think I'm actually gonna go with a Venom Enchant with the Triple Strike. So that should apply a lot of poison to you. And we can keep sacking that poison. Oh my god, he's multiplying like crazy. Um, should we do some ice now? So we're gonna do ice and venom to the boss dude. Hopefully I'm looking at the right one. Oh wait, he just it's just multiplying his attack, isn't it? What? Why did you attack him? For I thought it remembers who you clicked the last time for your, your attack uh, target. But I guess it forgets in between turns. Uh, what's my mana like? 71? Okay. I'm gonna use the prophetic vision. Do I want it at the end? Alright, I'm gonna try it at the end. It doesn't mean it's gonna play the one that's after it, I don't think. But we'll see. I think it plays any random card that's still... Oh! May maybe it does play it in order. Could have been coincidental. Plays the next Oh, right, this is the Prophetic Vision. It's the next card twice. So I did place it the same anyways. I was thinking it had the effect of Chaotic Prayer. I'm getting my cards mixed up here. Locate Vol. Let's put it here. What the? Switch, switch, start combo. Let's go for this guy. I think they're all dead. If I'm being real with you. Oh. I am very wrong about that. They are not all dead. One HP! The slime can do one HP extra on top of that. So he died by some debuffs. We definitely don't have enough mana to cast everything, but I'm sure that we will make it through. Let's go. This is the fullest my combo has ever been, my sequence. All right, sweet. So we got ally leveled up. We beat a boss and got the achievement as well. Plus three to all stats, that's a lot because he had zero starting out. Heal 50 health, that's dope. All right, Warrior Chapter Two, The Cultist. The dripping, the blood dripping from your sword creates a grisly pool at your feet. As you stare at your own reflection, your mind travels back to the path that brought you here. Are you staring at the blood pool to look at your reflection? Because that's, that's pretty grim. 
Despite the wealth you brought to the kingdom, nobles kept most of the gold with but a trickle making it to the peasants below. Makes a lot of sense. That's how things work usually, unfortunately as well. Protests and small scale riots were becoming commonplace and your advisors hid the situation from you. Unseen, a demonic cult slowly gained power and followers. In time, the cult had spread far further than just a few rebellious commoners and soon infected the council itself. The attack on your life plays through your mind again and a small detail comes to the fore. The doors of the court were always locked and barred while official duties were being held and only one person held the key, your chief advisor. The jaw clenches as you mentally add names to the list of those who would die on your return, the assassins, the leaders of the cult, and now your chief advisor and any of the other council member members aligned against you. Their deaths are necessary to save your kingdom, The uh, and the obelisk growing ever closer was a key. One more name adds itself to your list, one more being who must die to ensure your kingdom and your people's peace, Diglorak. Right. Is that how he looks like? Because he looks pretty freaking hard to kill. But we'll see. Start. Select your starting location. Let me see here. I would like to go to the recruitment cavern, tavern, but we can hit it up from the altar anyways. So in the prologue, I think you made it to the first boss, killed the first boss, and then that was it, if I'm remembering correctly. But I am excited to see how uh, everything pans out and how everything scales further into a run here for sure mysterious cave you are exhausted after your travels it's beginning to rain and you see lightning in the distance you decide to take shelter in a nearby cave upon entering you find a statue of an unknown deity what do you do you kick it obviously pray to the statue one random stat point and add a curse to your deck not worth hey oh my god there actually is a kick option i was just kidding i was that was like a, a noido reference kick the statue get a random piece of armor and take five max hp as damage absolutely that is totally fine so we have an uncommon chess piece here it gives you life steal somehow and it has that ice fissure thing once again uh i'm the only one that can wear armor right now not the only one that can but um i'm the only one that i will give it to because everyone else is a recruit and we're about to get some more of them too so we can revive for a reduced price. However, they are lower level. So do I really want to res, res them? They can level up. Um, but I feel like I'm just gonna go for a higher level one. Why are you 300 bucks? You, you seem worse than the other ones. Maybe it's just like a little bit of RNG happening there. Heal lowest, heal lowest, light heal all 15th, lowest ally for 30. Okay, let me see who has more int. Actually, you do have more int and wisdom. You know what? I'm gonna pay the 300 for you. You know what? Give me another one. Give me another one. I'm gonna take my old mage back. Just do a quick rezo on you. I don't think I can fit five. So unfortunately, we have no space for our other dude. Okay, you are the level two one, right? All right, you can have the staff thing. So this is an elite enemy. As an extra, an extra difficult enemy gives more gold, more XP, and an artifact reward. Warning, very difficult. Doesn't scare me. Let's go to the skill shop first, although I can't afford anything, most likely. Damage two times if an enemy debuff is greater than five. Hmm. That could be easy to do if we do both ice and... Um, ice and poison in the same turn, but I'm a little bit skeptical about that. I'm not gonna use it. Let's go to the elite fight. I can't resist. I got my party fully stacked up now. Holy crap, these guys look mean. Leader, when leader dies, all other enemies die. Oh, then that means, do they summon and it's only their little minions or do they mean all these guys? Poison Missile and Lesser Heal. Okay, I'm just gonna focus on the first guy. I'm wondering if it will kill all of them at the same time. I hope I'm reading into that right. Get wrecked. Come on, can we at least kill the same guy? Oh, the poison, that poison. 
Okay, so I guess I'm aiming for the back guy because he's actually more damaged now. So we got some curses in here. We can move you around and do a double. Please hit the same guy. Oh, they are. You're not. Only attack me, please. I want my minions to live. Okay, so we're aiming for you. We're still doing the hammer. Um, I might make him more vulnerable. Yeah, he's getting smacked so hard. Man, he's almost dead. All right, cultists. We're tired of your rituals. Holy crap, they are cursing like crazy. So we are gonna put you down here, put you over here, and let's just add a nice little venom. Not venom, ice. Why not? Damn, he's not dead yet. He's barely alive though. Oh man, they're healing. Okay, you wanna heal? I got you. I don't need a cleave. We don't need to kill all of them, so cleave doesn't make sense. Venom doesn't really make sense either. Let me do this type of attack. The multi-attack on him. Oh, he's dead. So dead. Oh, it does kill all of them. And I got a master combo. Sick. Holy crap. Let's see. Ally level up. So our mage leveled up to two. That's sick, sick, sick. We got a card. We got spinning kick. Damages and adds three combo de debuffs. The combo stack debuff we have not really been using yet. I'm wondering how that exactly works. We'll probably figure out with a card that shows up eventually that uses it. Deliver 12 times the count of status effects as damage to the enemy exhaustible. After playing this card, it is removed for the combat. It's called the final strike. It's 12 times the count of status effects plus the 26 regular base attack. I think that's included in the uh, in the card. I think that's how it works. Um, so the combo stack debuff is considered a debuff or a status effect. So we could use combo based on that. I know we had a bunch last time. This is actually a whole lot of damage. Um, I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna try it out. We're probably gonna keep it in our draw pile or our inventory until, of course, it makes sense to use it. So we really haven't been uh, using that mechanic too much either. So I'm excited to see if I can plan that out correctly. Deal 50%, uh, deal plus 15% damage if you have five or more cards in your grid. Interesting, 15. I might take that. Your debuffs can crit. 6% ch chance to play an attack a second time for zero mana cost. Does not stack. Okay, let's go. I have to take that. Small percentage, but I, I do want it to happen. So the elite battle wasn't so bad. Can't go to this one. This is a lot of battles in a row without any healing. It is a risk, but I am willing to take it. Let's go for this battle too. All right, who wants to die first? RIP, undying. Enemy cannot die unless all enemies are, other enemies are dead. On death, increased damage of all allies. Interesting, so we wanna go probably for this big guy over here first, then you, because we don't wanna take the damage increase from this guy, most likely. What do you do? The Ram dude. Hey, dude, let me see your stuff. Satire. Satire? 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 So he has Claw Strike and Hypnosis. Oh boy. Hypnosis does 20 damage and lock a random card in your grid. I got you. It's that whole deal. Let's go for this dude, please. Everything is sound. They are trying to kill the skeleton immediately. Ooh, this slime can really take damage. I will take the Vol. We got a Vol. Please go for this guy. What's the best place to click? The the hitbox, quote unquote, for the clicking for targeting is a little bit strange. 
It has to be like right in the center of their sprite, I think, maybe. <laughs> All right, let's see. We got multiplier. So let's multiply this. Cleave him up. Yeah, I, I feel that the warrior is probably the simplest to play, as as they tend to be, or the 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 most user friendly for a new player at least. Uh, and then there's complexities that can come with it after you uh, go into the game, unlock more cards, more mechanics, all that kind of stuff. But uh, for learning purposes, this, this does seem a lot simpler than what I remember the mage looked like. Alright, we were using a lot more mana with the mage, I remember too. Okay, so we want this guy next. We can't kill the skeleton. So we can do a triple. Let's do a triple. Let's do a triple on you. This is when we're gonna really start building up that combo. He's almost dead. Someone just hit him for 24, please. Good job. That mage is hitting for 39? How? That's higher than my base attack. Ally level up again. Okay, so we got to level up. Am I running out of mana? What does Wisdom do? Increases ally summon units max health and damage. Right. I think I should start spreading it around a bit. We could possibly need more mana soon, so I'm going to increase intelligence a little bit too. Staff of Walking. Travel over mountains and forests in the world map. Breaks after four uses. Interesting. Can I view the map? Whoa! So here's meta progression. Um, map, 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 map. I do not see it. I'm wondering if there's some kind of crazy way that I can go if I have it, but I can't check right now. Blood necklace and then the mana knife. I don't think three base damage is worth it for me. Blood necklace. We're not doing debuffs that much. I'll take the staff of walking. Hopefully that pans out to be really, really valuable. So yeah, we can walk through this stuff. Let me think. I'll use it when it makes sense. A little bit more sense. We're gonna go for this battle over here with the elite. And then if we can't take the third battle, we won't. Oh, it's a bear. No problem. We can use our bone breaker finally. If we have enough debuffs on him. Sleeping? Why are you sleeping? Oh my god! I thought he was sleeping. Raging. When hit, 75% chance to increase base damage by 2. Yikes. That's not good. Let's locate Vol. Hit him hard, boys. Okay, how much am I hitting you for? We have Cleave or we have Ice Enchant. I'd rather do Ice Enchant on you. 37. What does the hammer do? That's a crit for 156. Okay, 84 is a lot of damage. This thing might be dead soon. Yes, sir. Ooh, don't kill the mage. Shoot. Um, just do a rapid strike. This guy's dead. And I don't believe... They heal in between battles. Maybe they do? Oh right, they heal this way. Skill upgrade. Nice! So it has an increase up to 45 health that they're healing. Give a buff to increase damage by 15 instead of 10. I think that is the ability of that particular mage. Let's go over here. Please be one, one thing. Oh my god! So we got some magical swords. Elite. Enemy has greatly increased health and damage. Last stand. On death, deal 65 damage to its last attacker. Yikes. So who do I want to kill first? Leader. When leader dies, everything else dies. I believe the last stand will still trigger. I'm... S I, I wonder if I should kill the swords first. Because they don't have that much HP. And this guy, in turn, does have a lot of HP. You know what, I'm going to attack the guy first, 
And if everyone else starts attacking the swords, I will follow suit. You know what? We can. I think we can take him down. <laughs> it's actually like almost. What is that? Twenty percent of their HP. God, I'm so undecided. Twelve damage ish from each of the swords. That doesn't seem so bad. We're gonna go ahead and just kill the leader. Go. Keep pummeling him. Hit the leader. Okay, so we have Cleave over here. I haven't been using Cleave very much, have I? Your next physical attack does less damage, but it cleaves everybody. You know what? That could be an answer to both of the things I've been wondering if I should do. Let's do it. Double Cleave? It is. How come they're doing more damage to me now? It seems like they have increase of damage for some reason. Let's keep going. We could possibly kill the swords this time. This could be it. There's one sword. There's another sword. They did do their last stand to me, both of them. And he's dead too. Holy crap, I need some healing. We got an artifact. Rich hero, get 1300 gold. That is one of the achievements. Cape of value, reduces the price of new cards. Start each battle with the Decayed Blade, or Rune of Sacking, 50% damage if you have five or more cards in your grid. We're finishing battles quicker than that most of the time. Um, yeah, I don't know how to upgrade this blade to fix it. It would be nice to figure out, but I'm gonna take the Rune of Sacking. Maybe there is a boss battle coming up. Now with 100 HP, I'm really unsure if this is a good idea. But hey, you're not supposed to go with the good idea, right? You go with the fun idea for the rogue likes. So we have a bunch of these dudes. Overwhelming odds, on death increased damage of all allies. <sighs> Shoot. So a cleave in this case would be good if we can try to kill them all at the same time. Yikes, dude. We, all we have is rapid strike. Not great. What if we go cleave with rapid strike and a whole bunch of other modifiers? Like the poison modifiers and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to try it. So let's go with the cleave first. So we can just start whittling down Ur, buddy. That does barely any damage. But we're going to go debuff mode. We're trying it out. Please don't die. So we go like this. Cleave, and we're going to go with the Venom Enchant here. Let's go. So everyone's poisoned nicely. There's just numbers popping up everywhere. Oh my god. Okay, some of them are almost dead. Negative 40 damage. I'm going to put you over here to avoid that. We're going to go with the ice now. Or we can go with multiplier. We Once you place it, you can't unplace it. Card laid is a card played. Still, it's good. We're going to have a lot of frost up in these guys. Damn, we got to kill them quick because they're going to hurt us now. The frost is making them miss. Oh, they all died by debuffs. Yo, I think I had a good idea there. I think I played that right. So we're going to take the card. Prepared strike. We got rid of one, so we don't want to pick it back up. 70% chance to duplicate each existing debuff on an enemy. Yikes. Discarded after play. This card is discarded after play. It can be drawn up again up to three times. Interesting. So it leaves your sequence, and then you... It leaves your grid, and then you have to pick it back up again. Interesting. Your next attack and ignores enemy resistances and has plus 60 damage and it is a pure card it is most likely the most useful for us but at the same time there's other cards that i would rather use before it and i'm not using even all of my cards yet so i'm gonna go without it we definitely need a heal heal me up 
Do I want to walk ar across this terrain to go up here? It seems more exciting than over here, so I'm going to use one of my my staff walking thingamajigs. Does it tell you how many I have left? It doesn't. Breaks after four uses, so I guess we're just going to have to mentally keep a track of that. What are these things? Yellow Soul Stealer. Thieving. It steals 50 gold and deals 50 damage. What the frick? Attack increases by 18 damage each round. And this guy's a siphoner. Honestly, I do not want my gold stolen. 50 is quite a bit. So I'm going to kill this guy first, although it might not be the right idea. Um, I'm going to go with Locate Vull. Let's do it. Hey, Wet Paper Bag, how's it going? I did not heal that much HP. What the hell happened? I thought I went to a tent. Oh my god, we lost gold. Do I get it back if I kill him? All right, do this thing over here. I'm going to do... We can put these like all around here so that we can avoid all the bad stuff. And that's what we're going to do. Hit him hard. Where's the crits, dude? I'm doing good, man. We got more combo card clashers. I don't know if you caught it back in February when I first tried it. But um, yeah, we were lucky enough to get access to the full version early before release. And I'm playing that right now and really, really enjoying it. Alright, so let's start this combo. Please kill this gold guy because we're losing lots of gold. So close. No, hit the gold guy. Damn you. He missed! He missed twice! How did he miss twice? That's so crazy. Uh, okay, so we can do... I don't know if I want to start doing cleaves. I'm just going to do rapid strike instead. Nice! It triggered the ice thing. Okay. I think we do want to kill the red soul sealer because he's increasing... His attack power each round, I believe. Yeah, that hurts. It definitely hurts. So I will go with holy crap. Look at this board of crap here. Um do I want a mana reduction or a damage reduction? I'll take a mana reduction. We're going to add some ice to that attack. We're adding lots of ice to the attack. Holy crap. We could use Bone Breaker on him. No, he's too low HP now. Someone needs to heal me. Let's be real here. Uh, let's take the... Not the cleave. We're going to take the poison. Target you. You're dead. He's 100% dead. Nice. So we got some extra attacks going to the green guy, too. Yo, mages, can you heal me, please? One strategy that we could maybe try is stalling, if that's possible, so that the mages cast heal more. I don't know if that's realistic. Do I try to stall? Okay, I'm just gonna take away some of my attacks here. Can I unequip or something? I can. I can just trash it. Okay. I trashed it, right? I'm gonna keep all this stuff for no good reason at all. Let's start the combo. I need to choose another card. That was weird. It let me go anyways. So these guys will slowly kill this guy. Or maybe not even. Oh, it's just a warning that I haven't chosen a card from my uh, draw pile, which is fine because I'm trying to heal right here. Come on, mages, heal me. We're still going. We're cheesing it up. Alistair, hello, how you doing? One of the mods from Let Him Cook liked my idea for an enemy. Oh, sweet. Did you reach out to them? Look at this, we're a small little community. That is so funny. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been following that game for a while. As you know, me me and the one of the devs is a 
very, very frequent uh, visitor of the stream, and we, we chat quite a bit. So that's so funny. You, you found out about it on the stream, and now you're talking with them too, and adding ideas to the game. That game is so great. Like, the, the puns in there, um, the, the ally system and stuff like that. It's a very, very uh, cool experience. I think it's a unique Survivors-like experience. So this has lifesteal. 3% of magical damage. I don't think you're doing magical damage. Yeah, neither of these guys are doing magical damage. No one is. So that doesn't really matter, but it is casting a fireball every once in a while. So we're going to keep it. Um, let's go to the special event. While sleeping, you have a dream. You're in a dimly lit bazaar. There's a shadowy merchant glaring at you. He says, I've got a gift for you. That will make you your your faster, but you must pay the price. Okay, a couple of weird stuff going on here. What do you say, my friend? So there's too many quotes, first of all, and I think there's a little bit of a typo typo here. A gift for you that will make you you faster, but you must pay the price. Accept the offer, gain an artifact, decline, and gain a curse card. Let's gain the artifact, of course. So we got an artifact, which is Demon Gloves. Play each attack an extra time. Each attack does 40 damage. So it does overall less damage, but we're doing more combo. Yikes. We might go more debuff then, <laughs> because that will stack the debuffs more often. So we can either go for a gear shop. Holy crap, we definitely want to go to a shop. We have so much money, it's ridiculous. I'm going to go to the shop instead of the heal. Let's buy some gear. Nice. The name of this game is Combo Card Clashers. It's coming out on the 17th. There should be a prologue out there for you if you want to try it as well. Reduce the price of new cards by 20. Deals 3 the number of turns as damage to all enemies. You know what? I'm ready to pick that up because I'm so rich. Increases the chance that a monster will join your party after a combat from 15 to 25. I'm gonna buy it just to see what happens if we get another enemy joining our team, but we already have a full party. Because if I can replace our slime perhaps with something that's higher level and a stronger monster because it's further into the uh, dungeon, maybe that's a good idea, but I don't know if that exactly that's how that works. De damage dealing debuffs can crit. I think I will take that now because we are probably going to be stacking more of those debuffs. Alright, this is going to give us max health and wisdom. Let me check out my stash. No, I want the lifesteal to stay. Magic lifesteal. We don't need magic lifesteal. And this is magic lifesteal again. Can I reroll the shop? No reroll on the shop? Maybe that's like an unlock or something that shows up over here. That was not the best shop for us. Now. We can go to a skill shop and another gear shop, or we can traverse through the terrain and go for an elite battle, which is exactly what I'll do. Ham sandwich that throws discs of pepperoni. Hell yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Good job, dude. I'm so glad that you're getting involved. That is a good idea. Okay, so who do we got here? We got new Renewing Barrier, which blocks up to 120 damage, refills after each round. 120? That's a lot, dude. Deal extra damage for each percent of missing HP. Yikes. These guys are tough. These guys are real tough. This is not even the elite battle. I don't even know who to kill first. Um, this guy's inspiring. Maybe we killed the demonic dude first? Oh man, we gotta do more damage than that. Right, we're doing like multi-attack instead of heavy attack now that we have this glove, the demon glove. Uh, I'm gonna start doing, oh no, the triple attack's not here. Okay, let me do this cleave then, because that should bring down his resistance a lot. It ain't so bad. It ain't so bad. Yeah, I'm excited for that game to uh, to see what happens with that game as well. 
Uh, okay, so let's see. We have just a bunch of attacks in here. I'm preparing myself to start stacking debuffs. Especially for this guy, because he has a bunch of shield that shows up every single round. Oh man, 77 damage to my mage with one swing. That is not good. So we're, we are definitely going to throw an Ice Enchant onto that thing. He has so much debuff on him. We could use a Bone Breaker on him if we get it. But the thing is, I could also use a Bone Breaker on this guy who will probably stack more debuffs because of his Renewing Barrier. And I think we can kill this guy right now. Uh, yeah, I'll do the multi on the hammer for now. There you go, he's dead. Alright, let's, let's see how we deal with this guy. We actually did take down his barrier, so he doesn't seem that tough. Not as tough as I thought. How much debuff do you have? We're gonna use the final strike here. I think he's gonna have a bunch of debuffs on him that... Might allow us to kill him with it. Nope. Oh, we did 394 crit. Holy crap. Oh man, that, that final strike. Pretty crazy. Um, right, let's collect ally level up. So the slime is leveled up. We got you leveled up. Sick. We got another piece of armor, which we'll look at and compare. We're probably going to use it. Poison touch. It only seems appropriate that this guy takes it because he is a slime dude. Damage resists, 5% chance to poison enemy for 4 rounds. Interesting. So poison does your lowest stat as damage, meanwhile f burn does your highest attribute as damage but it doesn't last as long. Interesting. You know what? I'm going to give you the poison. Cool. It also has more damage on it. Let's move on. We're going for the elite. That's why I went over here. Okay, so let's go with... Do we want to do a cleave? Maybe we want to do cleave this time. Cleave with a lot of debuffs. I'm going to try. Somehow you have less health, the treant, the tree has less health, and he has less resistance than the werewolf. Surprisingly. I would think it's opposite than that. Holy moly. Our mage is almost dead. Yikes. And the werewolf has passive healing from this, from the looks of it. I take 20 damage if I use that? I'm not going to do that. So let's start applying some Ice Enchant. Oh right, I don't have the cleave yet. I was expecting that to hit everybody. Shoot, where's the cleave? This is cleave right here, isn't it? I screwed that up. No! Both of my mages are almost dead. Our cleave is here. Alright, so let's start the combo. I don't know what doubling the cleave will do. Oh god. Please let them miss a million times. Ah! So our one mage is dead. Not good. We are going to do a prophetic vision on our triple attack. They got 18, 16 to 18 stacks of freeze on them. They shouldn't be hitting us at all. They really aren't. <laughs> okay, so we, we, we've kind of broken it. We've kind of broken it because they really aren't doing... Oops. They really aren't hitting us at all. Let me see what that debuff does again. 4% chance to miss. So if we get them to 25%, they're 100% miss chance. And it is possible with all the attacks we're delivering here. Yeah, they're going to be at 25, some of them. All of them are at 25. Oh my god. 
So they can't hit us with that much freeze. Broken. So broken. I love it. I personally really love it. Uh, we're going to put you over here. This multiplier is taking away a lot of our mana. And we need to save the mana to empower our strikes with the, uh, with the elements. So I might take it out. But only when we start running out of mana. And we're out of mana. Ooh, 23. Not exactly 25. So they have a small chance to hit us. They won't, though. <laughs> right, let's take you out for a second here. You know what? Throw in the final strike on somebody. Let's go for this guy. Wait, I should have put all the modifiers before it. Too low many anyways. Oh, it didn't kill him. Interesting. I thought it would. Maybe we need to rely on a crit to be able to get it. So we have 10 mana regen every turn, so we won't be able to play this again, unfortunately. Okay, let's just put it over here. Wait, I should have used the hammer. What the hell's wrong with me? Yeah, the mana is actually going to our chaotic prayer, so we're not applying our modifiers anymore. Hmm. Let's use prophetic vision instead. Or take out prophetic vision, sorry. I'm talking about all the wrong things. Let's remove chaotic prayer to save the mana. How did I get full HP all of a sudden? <laughs> I didn't even realize. Okay, we did it. Artifact from the elite battle. I think I want this mana regen back in here. I might plug it all in. We seem strong enough. And at this point, mana is going to give us the power that we need. Can't get this. Reduce the mana cost of all cards by one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a minute. I think I'm definitely taking that. So we have a uncommon blade. Looks pretty good. I'm going to compare in our inventory once we take a step back. Doubles healing at healing sites. Or we have the scroll of preparation again. Mana knife. Yikes. Um, it's too bad you can't skip for gold because I would definitely do that. But I'll take the herbalist book. Why not? All right. Let's check out that sword. So attack, lifesteal, it's basically what we have over here, but this one is stronger. And it gives us intelligence, which would give us more mana healing. So I'm going to swap around a couple of things here. Oh wait, there's no one here anymore. <laughs> okay, well, let's go to a recruiting table if we can. We can't. There is none. Alright, let's go for some armor. This thing only has one intelligence? That's a piece of poo. Magic life seal, attack life seal, chance to cast fireball. Looks really good. I'll take it for three for 300 and I will maybe equip that on myself. Where did it go? Let's swap around. And then we have a hammer. I'm not going to take that. DK blade again, mana knife. Cape of value, keep seeing. Mana horn, is it stackable? It's stackable! So everything is reduced by two now. And I can sell gear too. Yeah, let's sell some gear. Why not? And then maybe I'll take the Cape of Value just in case we run into something that we want. So what is this? Two different boss encounters? I'm going to go for the top one here. Oh boy. This is the Dark Phoenix who will resurrect, I'm assuming. Upon death, turns into an egg. And we have to defeat the egg before it pops, most likely. Phoenix Slice attacks for two attacks, equaling 80 damage. Damages all enemies for 60 and apply burn debuff. Yikes. Uh, he's a tough cookie for sure. Let's start applying the triple attack. And we're gonna hopefully get him to 25 frozen status pretty quick. All right, there's freezing. Exactly what the doctor called for. Let's do it. There's 6%. Sorry, 6 times 4 would be 24% to miss. He missed! Look at that. Um, don't need to cleave. I'm going to take the Locate Vol. He is almost dead already. How did we do this? So he has 40% chance to miss. And he sure did. He missed one of them. 
Um, multiply on the attack, probably? Or can we kill him with a brain bone breaker? I don't think we can yet. It's more fun to keep smacking him anyways. And I don't know what happens when he turns into an egg. Maybe we save it for the egg or something. If he carries all of his debuffs, that would be great. 25 stacks of ice, he's not gonna hit us. Yes, sir. Once again, I am saving that Bone Breaker, so let's just do a quick little poison. Okay, so two other things came out with the egg. Interesting. So the egg has a shield, and it has egg form. Phoenix will be respawned after four rounds. What the hell? Flame Spirit is here. Okay, so this could be tough. We want to apply as many debuffs as we can. How much does cleave cost? Okay, maybe I do the cleave because I don't know if these guys stick around even after the egg is defeated. They don't have that, uh, this doesn't have the leader buff or leader trait which kills everything after it's dead. So I'm assuming that we actually do have to kill these flame spirits as well. Next physical attack does cleave. Okay, cool. I think this is going to be our combo. So we can start applying a lot of debuffs to everybody. Let's go. Yep. Yep. Okay, after four rounds, this guy will pop out. We're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. We have an increasing damage here. I'm gonna put the hammer in there. Just for some ex additional damage. Let's see how much damage we do. Fair enough. He's over half, and it's only halfway to hatching. One of the flame spirits died as well. We'll put this in our inventory. That's our full inventory. Already done. Flame spirits dead for sure from the cleave. And... I think the egg's dead too. Yes, he is. Easy peasy. Extreme 25 hit combo. Collect the card, baby. That's not a lot of healing. All of this is bad, so I'm gonna skip it. All right, chapter three, gateway to destiny. Your sword's decisive thrust pierces a tower guardian's heart. And as its massive body slides off your blade, the doors to the great obelisk swing open with a resounding click. Open up close, the obsidian entranceway reveals intricate carvings depicting epic battles, magic wonders, and mysterious rituals, capturing the duality of light and dark, good and evil. At the center, a figure encased in light battles a monstrous entity cloaked in a dark shadow. Stepping into the atrium, you confront a circle of cloaked figures around the unlit brazier. Brazier? Brazier? Moving deeper, the brazier ignites, ignites, revealing detailed features on each statue. The unmistakable crown of Zeradon rests on every brow, and among them, the like likenesses of your father and grandfather evoke memories. Identifying them as the kings of Zeradon, depicted in castle portraits as recognition sets in. The father, your father's statue seems to gaze at you, and his voice echoes in your mind. The weapon awaits at the tower's peak. Reserved for you alone, my son, conquer your foes, claim your birthright. Zaradon belongs to our family, our people, not to any demon or cult. Go, seize a mind crystal and save your kingdom. You feel your ancestors' presence as you head up the tower. Cool. So we're selecting our starting location again. This one is very, very divided. I'm sure I can't traverse through here with my staff of walking. So we gotta be super, super careful here. Now one thing that I'm going to check is if we can start this as a second segment for this map because, uh, you know, I, I would love to call that the first look and we will continue through the run the next time we jump in. Let me see. I, it seems like it will allow us to continue. We can indeed continue. So folks, that's going to be our session for Combo Card Clashers for today and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm really loving this deck builder. I don't play a lot of deck builders as you guys who have been following the channel know. I'm more of an action roguelike 
type of guy. But the thing about this game is there, there's a lot of activity with making sure that your grid and your sequence is as efficient as it can be. So it adds that extra element where, um, you know, I'm not just choosing the next card that I'm playing. There is another element that keeps me more engaged. And that's why I really like this game. This game, again, is coming out on May the 17th. So if you're interested in it, make sure you wish list it now. I'll leave a link for all of you as well. And yeah, leave a like on the video if you've enjoying, been enjoying the content. And make sure you subscribe as well. Would really appreciate it. That's what we got for Combo Card Clashers. And we will be back again soon with more of this game. Yay!